like a gazpacho. I'm sure that uh, it may not have quite enough time to chill to a cool temperature before eating tonight, but at least we'll have a good sense of maybe how long that'll take. So I wanna start with the wild rice salad first. Wild rice tends to take longer to cook. It's gonna take about an hour or so. We'll get that started first. And then while that's cooking, we'll move on to the cucumbers and get the other vegetables prepped for the soup. So we'll kind of be going back and forth. So I did see on the recipe, it said you can use half basmati, half wild. Mm -hmm. uh, is that just to be easier on the stomach? Just for some variety. Uh, some people may want more, you know, working with more of a macro diet may want to limit the amount of wild grain that they have. Uh, so, but really just an option. Basmati oh. will always be kind of a preferred grain for rice because it's a little more cooling, a little more easy to digest than other grains. So kind of a half step maybe for those who could have some trouble with the wild. I and then I, like, I yeah. could not find pine nuts. Okay. They didn't have any at Whole Foods. So I have cashews and walnuts. Okay. Okay. Either of those are nice for added omega-3s, especially walnuts. You know, cashews might be a little too creamy and oily for pitta season. Uh, I would might maybe even just not add them, Okay. quite honestly. Um, and if you were to add an alternative to the pine nuts, go more the route of the lighter seeds and nuts that will be more pitta balancing. Those are gonna be your sunflowers, uh, your pum pumpkin seeds. They're a little bit more neutral. Oh, I think I might have some pumpkin seeds. Let me just yeah, you throw some. This might be a nice alternative. Again, Ayurveda is the middle of the road. We wanna find like Goldilocks, just the right dose for your individual needs. And being in the summer season, dominated by fire and water elements, according to Ayurveda, we have this tendency to have a little bit more quality toward heat and oiliness. So we wanna keep that fire mitigated. Parsley is packing a punch in this recipe. There's flat and curly leaf. Flat leaf is what this recipe calls for. It tends to be more strong in flavor. It also has more essential oils than the curly leaf parsley. So that's why it tastes so much more flavorful and can be really wonderful to pack a punch in terms of vitamins, vitamin A, vitamin C. It has significant amounts of potassium, calcium, phosphorus, magnesium, and iron. So like it is an osteopenic woman's bouquet of minerals, right? So as we're aging and approaching menopause and perimenopause like a lot of women and clients that I work with, this is a really easy way to pack a mineral punch naturally in its whole form versus taking supplements and pills, right? And this is so easy to throw in salads in the summertime and in soups and stews for fall and winter. It's, it's really such a big winner, parsley. It's funny, I didn't even really appreciate it for any nutritional value until I went to Ayurveda school and started learning my herbs a little bit better. I always thought it was pretty dull in flavor as compared to my favorite like cilantro or basil or rosemary or some of the more, you know, powerhouses. So that's all an impassioned little plea to give, give some newfound respect to parsley because it really does pack a punch. And you want to try and buy parsley bunches that have young, that are young, younger. And you'll know that because the leaves aren't so massive. When the leaves get really big and almost leathery, like the size of celery leaves, then they tend to be a little bit too bitter. So you generally want to try and find them to have, even these I think are pretty, in my opinion, big leaved, you know? Um, but 
is what I was working with at the farmer's market this week. So pulled it out of my fridge, have it with my leftover cilantro from the week and some water here and I store it in the fridge. Well, it's just a plastic baggie over the top. So why don't we uh, first start with bringing three and a half cups of veggie broth to a boil where we're gonna start our rice. If you're not using veggie broth, you can use water. If you have any of the leftover veggie scraps from our weeks of cooking in your freezer, this would be a good opportunity to bust that out and make a basic stock. I'm working with a boxed low sodium organic veggie broth that I just picked up from my local grocer. We're gonna be measuring out one cup of wild rice or your mix of rice uncooked. So use whatever size saucepan you think you're gonna need for that. And give the rice a good rinse before you add it to the broth and bring it to a boil with a little pinch of salt. Using veggie broth to cook your grains really does take your nourishment to the next level. In flavor and nutrients. So while that comes to a boil, I'm going to start washing my rice. Put this also on the back burner since that'll be going for a little while. Now, before the rice finishes its cooking time, in the last 10 or 15 minutes is when we'll be adding the chopped vegetables, the squash and the red bell pepper. So make sure your pan has enough room in it so that after some of the rice being cooked, you can still add those vegetables to the pan. I'm realizing I gotta transfer mine to a bigger one. So I'm gonna do that right now. Janet, did you notice I'm rocking a new apron for the July series than last month in June? How do you like this one? That one's really pretty. <laughs> I've only got one and it's Star Wars. <laughs> oh, that's fun. I don't think I've seen you rock that. Yeah, I've worn it once and I washed it. I should go put it on. I'll go put that on here in a minute. Yeah, you got to get that on, girl. <laughs> Washing my rice. Now I'm choosing not to cook 
the rice salad in my instant pot, although that's an option that you can work with. I, I'm just personally choosing to work on the stove top today. Lately, I haven't been having a great success cooking rice in my instant pot. It's been coming out very mushy and I can't quite figure out why. So, um, so I'm just gonna go what I like to call analog, you know, back to how we did it before we had the latest tech advantage, right? So here's my right. Star Wars friend. What's that? I said that here's my Star Wars apron. So it's got yeah, you Star have the Wars. Oh, nice, nice. Oh. oh, oh, excellent. I was gonna say it was pretty, pretty <laughs> simple there. I like how yeah. you have a little bit of Darth Vader in the pocket, so to speak. Yeah. Boba Fett is on one side, Yoda is on the other side, and then Darth Vader and the Stormtrooper. Cool. <laughs> I'm going to add a teaspoon of salt to the broth, and you can add the rice to it. So you're going to bring the broth to a boil with the rice in it. I think depending on the grain you're cooking, some people have different ways of doing it. And tonight's recipes are coming from Amadia Morningstar's cookbook, Ayurvedic Cooking for Westerners. It's kind of an older book. Um, very simple recipe. She also really knows a bit about um, doing a polarity diet. So the cookbook is not strictly Ayurvedic. It's like a mixture of Ayurveda and polarity which I'm not very familiar on, so can't speak to that, but. Once that comes to a boil, then the typical rice cooking method, right? We'll lower the heat to low, cover it, set our timer for 50 minutes, and then move on to preparing our cukes. Okay. Turn off the right burner. So we're gonna wash and slice one leek, peel and mince one garlic clove. You will also, by the way, need a food processor or blender for this recipe. So if you don't have that handy, you can pull that out of the cupboard. I'm going to turn off the last inch or so of the bulb with the fruit there. Maybe just pull off the outer, more rough leaves and trim off the very top here an inch or so. And we're basically going to lightly steam the sliced leek with the minced garlic clove in a steamer basket for about five minutes. And we do this to remove some of the pungency and some of the rajas of the ingredients, right? Because it is cooling, which is the balancing quality we're going for this season. But like in traditional Chinese medicine, when you're bringing a dose of medicine, you want to also always include a small portion of a similar quality that you're trying to correct. It's like having that little dot in the yin and yang 
sides there, the opposing colors. It's so that the body takes the medicine in more willingly than swinging the pendulum to the complete extreme and opposite side where even on a subtle level, the body's like, hey man, like what's going on? Prince so I'm watching the leak. How much do I cut off of it? Just all the, just until where it's like- You know, I trimmed a good inch off the bottom of the bulb where the roots were. And yeah. then I peeled some of the outer leaves that were a little more tough off. Yeah. And trim the top so that they were pretty evenly fresh okay. at the top without looking too brown or cracked. So we're adding, you know, just a little bit of this pungency with micro dosing, right? We're just adding one garlic clove, one leek. And the leek on the spectrum of the onion family is a bit more mild than if we were to use a yellow or even a red onion. So you could also perhaps experiment with scallions also in the leek family, shallots, pungent but more mild. Up my it says mince, but you know, I'm not going to mince mine too big because the holes in my steamer are a moderate size. If I mince them, they're just going to fall right through to the water boiling underneath. So if you want to do a very rough chop or even just slice the garlic clove before you put it in the steamer, go ahead because we're going to blend it in the blender anyhow after we steam it. So it doesn't really matter. You just want to make sure that you don't lose your beloved little garlic cloves, right? How, how did you cut up the leeks? Lengthwise, sidewise? Yeah, just slice them along the length. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you'll wind up with like these little rings. Okay, perfect. Like so, yeah. And just try to slice them evenly so that they'll steam evenly. In my research for tonight's episode, I learned that cucumbers belong to the same family as melons and gourds, which kind of makes sense. And we experience our cukes here as a pretty uniform shape and size. We've got small to medium green cukes or really long slender green cukes that have been uh, you know, genetically bred and, and kind of commercially farmed that way for easy and stable transport. But cucumbers from around the world come in all different colors and shapes, uh, much like melons do. So I haven't yet come across a cuke that looks different than the ones I've grown up with in the US, but I'm curious if any of you have. So if any of you have, go ahead and put a little comment in the chat below or let us know if you've come across some different looking cukes. My broth is almost to boil here. Oh, looks like it is. So I'm going to go ahead and lower that to low. Maybe a medium low. We'll see because, again, my experience cooking wild rice is that it does take a bit longer and a little bit more of me to. Uh, get to that soft, chewy texture. So 
going to do a medium low, set my timer for 50 minutes, 5.0, 5.0. It's interesting, I notice on my electric stove here and the electric stove at my last place in Massachusetts, when I set the digital timer and press enter, it always loses a full minute from whatever I initially set the time to. I don't know why that is. I just assumed it was the stove in Massachusetts, but this is a brand new unit and new appliances. So if any of you guys out there have a hint as to what's up with digital timers on stoves, let me know, because I wonder, did they do that on purpose and give you an extra minute for, you know, when you're still getting all the details done? I don't know. My right. is accurate. Mine doesn't lose a minute or add a your, minute. Yours doesn't lose a minute. Of course yours doesn't. I can't imagine yours would be off a micro fraction of time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But so I too just the steamer ready. Oven. Let's get some water in there and start bringing that to a boil. And since we're only steaming for five minutes, you don't need a lot of water in here. I'm just gonna add a couple of cups. Jenna, how smooth did your skin feel yesterday after washing off the mask? I mean, my skin felt, so I didn't notice it right away afterward, but a couple hours later is when yes. I noticed that it was really soft. Yes. And then I had so much left over. I gave Scott a treatment, the whole treatment. I and then I gave, I gave my neighbor the whole treatment. And then my friend came over for dinner and I gave her the whole treatment. I love it. I get made up for everybody, folks. <laughs> Medicine straight from your kitchen. If you are not on the Rasayana train, you need to get up on it because it's a good one and beyond. And everyone was very excited when I texted them and say, hey, do you want a free facial treatment? <laughs> I love it. I love it. Right. I absolutely love it. I'm gonna add a pinch of salt to my water here in the steamer just to speed things along a little. I think everybody knows by now adding salt to water lowers the boiling point, makes it boil more quickly. and garlic in our steamer basket. And again, this part is just to cook out some of that pungency, keep it from tipping the scales a little too heavily and overpowering the cukes. I want to show you two things that I've done in my kitchen that I've made a big difference to. Yeah, let's see it. So the first thing is I bought one of these. Oh yeah, I'm jealous. Ooh, love that. Love that. I mean, you so wouldn't helpful. think that. I, it's so helpful. And then the second thing that I did. What? Wait, what are those called, by the way, for those watching the replay? Do I don't know the name of those. Is it spatula? like a chef's spatula of some kind? Yeah, I'll have to look. I don't remember what it was called. It wasn't something intuitive. <laughs> I got put vegetable pickup and I got that on Amazon. Oh, so, so you got it online. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I got it. It's just yeah. OXO makes it. I like that it's really wide. You know, it's yeah. great for when you're scooping up large volumes off your cutting board. I like the handle there. The handle is really wide. And this is where we kind of dork out a little bit about the equipment in your kitchen. You know, invest in good equipment in your kitchen. You want something that's comfortable in your hand. 
you want something that has a good weight to it, like any blade or knife that you're working with. So right on. And then what does that cost you? Maybe 15, $8. 20 bucks. Oh no. no. Oh my God. Under $10. And it has I measurements mean. on it. And you oh, can look at that. Them. Isn't that great? You're working with pastry or dough or, oh, how smart. I love that. But the edge is not sharp like a knife, right? It's, no. it's, yeah. Yeah. That's I mean, awesome. you can push it through cheese, but it's not sharp enough to cut any, really yeah. cut yourself or anything. Yeah. And then the second thing that I did is I connected my compost bucket to the end of my island. Oh, I love that. So, Let's see it. So I have my <laughs> cutting board here and then I can just scrape it. And right just totally push it right off the edge into the basket. Yeah. Brilliant. Yes. And it saves we so love much systems time that math. work. <laughs> we only like systems that work here at Rasayana. You know, if it doesn't work, that's great. Try often, fail fast, learn always. That's the motto here, right? So. All right, while I wait for the water to boil, I think maybe I'll move on to just starting to measure out and wash my parsley. We're gonna use, I think, about a quarter cup. Let me just double check that. This is my first time making this recipe as all the others. Half a cup of fresh Italian parsley. So go ahead and be liberal. like you, I noticed the difference in my skin several hours after the treatment, like when the body had fully digested it all, you know? And when I realized I had some honey encrusted in the, some of my hair <laughs> on the hairline when I was getting ready for bed. And my skin felt so much smoother than it had uh, in a while. So that was lovely. And of course I have my leftovers in my refrigerator, nice and sealed fresh for my self-care routine this evening I have planned. And then I, with a garlic ear preparation and the sesame oil, I put that in my ears just a little bit but then I kept smelling it and I was like, what is that smell? And then I kept remembering, <laughs> oh yeah, I put garlic in my ears. <laughs> All right, my water's coming to a boil here. So I'm gonna get my steamer basket in. Maybe set a second timer for five minutes. I love those steam. Okay, well, my microwave digital timer does not lose a minute. So that's on time. So, yay. So I have yet to select next week's recipe. So for those of you who have been toying with ideas, 
get them to me. I'll make a decision by the end of Friday. So make your vote known. Is there an ingredient? Is there a particular part of the world's cuisine that you're interested in applying some of these Ayurvedic concepts to? Let me know. And I'll do my best to make it work. I've been getting a lot of beets in my farm chair. Like the- A lot beet. of what? Beets? Beet. Oh, yes, yes. So like a beet chutney. Yeah. Could be interesting. Absolutely. I have a really great recipe I love for a beet. It's like a velvet red beet and red lentil soup that you can also have. I've eaten room temperature and slightly chilled as leftovers before. And it's fantastic, especially with a fresh squeeze of lime that you hit it with some lime right before you have it. Woo! Lime and beet magical summer combination of folks super cooling super blood purifying those two ingredients so when you add them together you get a real ah, ah, one two punch for your balancing of the gut and balancing pitta keeping rasa and rakta dhatus clean those early tissues are the most important ones. They're the foundation for every tissue developed thereafter. And Ayurveda places great emphasis on caring for those initial tissues in the body. As Jenna can attest to, we had a practical lab a few days ago and made a lot of homemade formulas for our skin and sense organ care. If you'd like to learn more of how to make your home your own pharmacy, book a free talk. I offer free 30 minute breakthrough calls. We'll get you on my schedule and just have a no pressure conversation about what it is you're looking to do and accomplish for your health and well being this year. And then I'll give you some ideas on clarifying that vision if it's not clear to you and what I think your next step should be, even if they're not with me. Okay, I think I've gotten half a cup of parsley here. I'm gonna pause and wash and rinse that. Get my herbs back in my fridge. Cool. And should we keep it as the whole leaf parsley or should we, are you mincing that? Um, I think for this, it doesn't matter because it will go into the processor with everything else. So you can cut it coarsely if you think that'll help for the kind of blade or processor you're using. But as long as you pluck the leaves from the stem, that's the most important. The stem part might just be too bitter a taste and overpower the soup. So we definitely don't wanna use the stock uh, for this one. Okay, hey, so the leak and garlic timer's gone off. I'm gonna go ahead and shut that heat off and just take it off. I'll start letting that cool a little bit with the lid removed before I handle it or transfer it to the processor. Thank you. 
And then once you're done with that, you can move on to wash, peel, and seed your three cucumbers. These are the typical ones I find at my farmer's market, kind of the medium universal width in size. They kind of all really look the same. When you pick cucumbers fresh, you want to look at the tips and the ends here and make sure that you don't see any uh, soft spots or any brown uh, edges there, which would indicate that it's been off the vine a little too long and already started to lose its prana. And you're gonna cut those cubes into some largish chunks. Those will be going in the food processor as well. So you don't have to worry about processing them too much. To peel a cucumber, I slice it lengthwise and then just use a spoon to scoop out the center somewhat like a boat as you would a squash. Imagine that. So I find it interesting that some people have told me I have some people in my family who cannot digest cucumbers. They repeat them as they describe it. They have acid reflux, which I find fascinating because that's a very strong and opposite reaction to what make this food so therapeutic in value. So if you're one of those people, but you want a nice cooling soup to choose from, then you might want to try substituting watermelon. And maybe instead of the parsley, you use basil. Um, combinations like that, that might work better for you that are also very hydrating and cooling, high water content. That's why summer vegetables and fruits are always so juicy. It's nature's antidote to the dryness that is produced from long days of heat and fire element. And you probably could make this soup with the cucumber peels on, but that again might make the soup a little tougher to digest for some. This keeps it really light, which in general we want to be doing for our dinners. And this recipe tonight, the soup makes between three and four cups. So I'm sure that'll vary depending on the size of cubes you're using. And Did my shopping early, so my cucumbers have been in the fridge for a full two days. And they're super chilled, so I'm sure this will be nice and refreshing.
the recipe for this chilled cuke soup today calls for olive oil. I think I mentioned in the past how it's a little more challenging these days to find a high quality olive oil that hasn't been altered in some way. But you could also try using a lighter oil like sunflower oil, perhaps as an alternative. I would not suggest using coconut oil for this. It would be perhaps a little too cooling and likely start to congeal and solidify as you store it in the fridge if you have a leftovers. I just think it would alter the consistency a little bit too much. But I don't know, I've never actually done it. So that's just my hypothesis. Many of you do try that at home. Drop a line and let me know how that went. I'd like to know. those chunks right into your processor. Note to self, if you don't have a fancy chef spatula like Jana has, and you're using a chef's knife, Never use the sharp edge of the blade to scoop toward your hand and lift off of your cutting surface. Flip the knife backwards, so at least you're using the dull edge to scoop up with your hand. Might seem like common sense, but you know, you get in a groove. Cooking can be meditative, especially with repetitive motions like chopping, dicing, grating. So just make sure you're and safe. When I worked at the CVS and um, near MGH, mm -hmm. I'd always get people that would come into my pharmacy who uh, could cut off the tips of their fingers. And they'd yeah. be like, what do I do? <laughs> <laughs> would they come in with the attached the detached piece or would it have been all lost at that point? It's all it's usually all lost at that point. Yeah. Yeah. That's rough. That's rough. All right, we're gonna go ahead and add our steamed leek and garlic clove to our blender with our pukes. Add your chopped parsley. Before we add any more to that, go ahead and just pulse it a couple times just to maybe push it down a little bit. We're gonna be adding in a moment, the juice of a lemon along with some more veggie broth. My blender is looking a little full, so I'm gonna give it a few pulses to start to combine.
Smells so nice. It's like a mineral bath for your nose. my screen here. Basically everything else. We're going to go ahead and put in ah, how much veggie stock. One cup of veggie stock. quarter cup of your olive oil. Salt with that. Oh, emulsify everything. Half a teaspoon of salt. It's going to go into that mix. you're using cayenne pepper and black pepper, an eighth of a teaspoon each. Again, just a little dose of heat and pungency to balance out all of these flavors. And if you're experiencing excess heat, excess dryness, then omit the cayenne and use just the black pepper. Of course, you also have the option of using any leftover cooling masala mix that we've used in past weeks. Again, you know, let's play around here. Go ahead and use what you got and let me know how it tastes. I am going to I'm gonna need to buy a spice rack. That's what I'm gonna need. And that's it. And then put the cover on. You're going to blend it until smooth. That'll take about 20 to 30 seconds. And then we'll pop that into the fridge to start to chill while we finish preparing the rice salad.
I'm gonna blend mine a bit more. It's looking a little too fibrous for my liking. It might also be time for me to sharpen the blades of my food processor. It's just dawning on me now. Make sure you give it a good taste before you chill it. Adjust seasonings to your liking. Oh, I like that. I like that a lot. Wow. Yeah. It actually has body to it. I think because of the leek and that tiny piece of garlic, it's not just a bland, cold, because cucumber is pretty boring, guys, really. I mean, by itself, it's just water, right? It's like 95% water. So this actually, I like this. I like that there's a little subtle pungency, but still very light and refreshing to it as well. So yeah, two thumbs up, Amadea. Thank you for sharing your wisdom with us. Go ahead and get that out of your blender. Maybe put it in a bowl or uh, get it in the fridge. Whatever works for you. Make some room on my counter. Go ahead and wash your small yellow squash and red bell pepper. The red bell pepper you want to mince into really small pieces, think kind of like confetti style. They're just going to be this beautiful sprinkle and splash of color in your rice. So up to you how large you want to make them. And the original recipe for this rice salad tonight included a creamy garlic salad dressing, which I'm vetoing tonight. I feel like we are already dancing in our 20% with our leek and our garlic clove in the soup. So I, I saw it as a little redundant. So I vetoed that. If you feel you need a dressing for this salad, I would tend to lean more toward your miso ginger soy dressings. I actually use Amit Bragg's aminos instead of soy. So just make sure you are being mindful of your salt intake during the summer season, especially we want to be favoring more of the sweet, bitter, and astringent taste for the summer season to balance out the dosha. And for those of you joining us late in the series, you're not understanding, you're like, pitta, what, fire, what? Check out my free intro to Ayurveda video on my YouTube channel. I've got like a 12 minute talk there where I just give a little basic framework of some of these mind body types and principles and concepts that pertain to the recipes that I've been choosing for this series.
and the recipes that we're working with for the month of July are balancing out the effects of excess heat in the mind body, which tend to show up as skin flare ups, all your itises, bursitis, arthritis, gingivitis, also uh, more critical and sharp or judgment, uh, being more excessively critical is another aspect of imbalanced pitta Now I'm trimming a bit of that white pith on the inside of the bell peppers here, but that taste itself is very medicinal. It's very bitter, right? It's like the pith on a orange or a pomegranate, which Ayurveda would say you want to leave some of that on. Don't get rid of all of it. It's very cooling and purifying to the blood, the bitter taste. So as you trim, Leave just a little bit of that in there, of course, to your tolerance and liking. I want you to have all the knowledge here in the series about what makes this food medicine. Jenna, do you sharpen your knives at home or do you take them to get professionally sharpened? It's funny you were just saying that <laughs> because I was immediately thinking I need to go get my knives sharpened. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I mean, I have a sharpener, like a small sharpener that slash magnet on my refrigerator for like a quick hit if something's super dull, but yeah, it might be time for me to find a hardware store or somewhere yeah. that would sharpen them for me. That's the only place I know of where they would be sharpened, unless I maybe go to a fancy like yeah store. Yeah, so like William Sonoma will sharpen your knives, and then there's a place in Boston called Sir La Table that'll sharpen your knives. Oh yeah, isn't that down at the Boston Market, like downtown, with all of that stuff or? I'm not sure. My friend usually takes it there. So. Oh, okay. I think it is. I think case, it's part down by Haymarket and the new Boston Market where they have um, setups for public cooking demos and and stuff like that. I, I I think that's why it sounds familiar to me. I was researching it for a Rasayana event when I was still in Boston. And then I have a little knife sharpener, but some of my knives require a certain edge. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. my knife sharpener doesn't do that. So right. I'm actually going to take it to my friend's house this weekend and see if he can sharpen my knives because he's pretty good at it. So I'm going to see what he can do. Cool, cool. You know, there's always that old fashioned like dowel like apparatus that you can just manually, you know, do your thing. Um, I appreciate paying for professional service and getting the best resources for your goals. Nice. 
nice and small that way you will only need 10 or 15 minutes to cook And then I also used to have a honing stick, but I don't, I don't know where that went. A what stick? I think they call it a honing stick. So what does that do? It's like the rod that you go like this. Oh, with. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that's what it was called. Yeah, exactly. Now for the yellow zucchini, you're going to slice that. So we'll have a nice, uh, salad both in color taste and texture you're going to have the round discs of the yellow squash with the confetti of the red pepper and this beautiful bouquet of wild rice and grains so i love pretty food i love a pretty plate man you, you put a pretty plate down and i'm i'm in And if your squash at some point is too wide or big and your discs are like, you know, bigger than a fork might comfortably hold or that you're gonna put in your mouth, go ahead and cut it into half moons. You're allowed, do your thing. If you wanna bust out a cookie cutter and make your squash stars like Wonder Woman, go ahead and do that. I'm not gonna stop yet. My friend just gave me a spiralizer thing and I haven't used that yet. Like to so. make noodles and such? Well, it's like to cut up vegetables. Oh, do you like put it in the core and then just kind of circle yeah. around and round and it comes out kind of like a slinky? Yeah. <laughs> cool. I've only ever seen those used on cooking shows like for potatoes for like a fancy roast when they will like put it around a turkey or a big, you know, roast. And if you finish cutting up your squash, go ahead and measure out a quarter cup of your nut alternative if you're using pumpkin seeds or your pine nuts, sunflower seeds, all good options. So in addition to learning cucumbers come from the melon and gourd family, I learned that they contain this substance called silica, which is an important component of healthy connective tissue. I have to look into that a little bit more because when I was in massage school and studied the connective tissue fascia, you always learn of it as a mix of you know, collagen fibers and uh, ground matrix. And I've never heard of any terminology of silica. So I'm very curious about that because that was one of its special properties of cucumbers and why it's used often in the treatment of 
sunburns, dermatitis, you know, those kinds of symptoms that would show excess fire element in the body. It's also apparent like got uh, large amounts of these two kinds of acids, ascorbic and caffeic, which apparently make it such that it helps with fluid retention, if you can believe that which is kind of ironic, right? Because cucumbers are so full of water, you would think that they wouldn't help with water retention. But my understanding is that because of those acids, that is the case, but more for topical applications. So think of the spa and the puffy eye syndrome where you put cool slices of cucumbers on the skin and it'll reduce the water retention and puffiness around the eyes. But if you were to take that medicine internally, then perhaps you would get more of that liquidity and the hydration effect, which we love cucumbers for, for dry, clicky joints and the like. So that's, that's my take on it. If any of you out there know otherwise, let us know. So my rice has just a couple of more minutes on it. In the meantime, I'm going to do a little cleanup in my kitchen sink while I let the sink, you know, soup is chilling and that's simmering. So I'm just going to mute myself so you don't hear my clashing and clanging.
All right, my timer for my rice went off. So I'm gonna lift the lid and just take a peek. And then we're gonna add our chopped veggies to that, put the lid back on, lower the heat just a little bit further down to low proper and finish it off for another 10 minutes. So don't worry if there's still a lot of broth and liquid still in your pot, we still have to cook the veggies. So go ahead and add those. If you feel like you wanna add any other seasonings to your salad to give it a boost of flavor, since we're not using a dressing, feel free to do that. I think the flavors of the vegetables and the broth and the salt itself will be enough, but Again, if you want to use some of that leftover cooling masala spice mix or any other that maybe you've created and experimented with, go ahead and pour them in there. I'm going to add a little salt and pepper to mine. Since we're and adding. Are you, thinking, are you thinking to add the lemon at the very end? I am beginning to think. We don't, okay. Yeah, the lemon at the end. Okay. Yeah, we'll mix that into the soup at the end. So again, you want to go easy on the salt in the summer months, right? Having that salt rimmed margarita snacking on olives and brine on a hot sunny sidewalk is a kindling for pitta. That's a lot of heat going on. So be mindful. Put that lid back on, set it for another 10 minutes. And continue my washing while that goes on.
Some of you have asked me about my opinion on raw versus cooked food and what Ayurveda has to say about that. And, you know, as I've said before, Ayurveda is a system of nature, of studying relationship. And so there's no direct answer to that question. Ayurveda gives good reason to have both in your wellness plan. Generally, we want to save raw foods to the spring season where we're trying to balance heavy and slimy qualities that are typical in the universe during that time of year. But during the summer months when things are a lot more dry and a lot more heating, we want to utilize those cooling properties. And part of doing that is by lightly cooking our food. And even though it is summer season and we are more inclined to eat salads and gispacha soups and the like, we do generally want to keep about 80% of our plant-based diet lightly cooked and well seasoned. This is what really stokes our digestive strength, which ironically is a lot weaker in the summer as compared to winter months. It's funny, when I first learned that, I was like, well, that doesn't make sense. You would think because it's fire element and summer season that there would just be more fire in the body. And that's true. But the location of the fire anatomically is what's different where during summer months, that heat is distributed throughout the entire body. That's one of the body's divine designs to help cool it down by distributing the heat over a larger area. So there's not too much intensity in any one tissue or area of the mind body. And so in winter months, the digestive capacity is stronger because that heat source, that agni is more centralized. It's more centralized to the gut so that we can process those more complex, fattier, richer, more heavy and dense foods that we're typically eating during those months. Those are our roasts and our Thanksgiving celebrations and our squashes and our foods that are gonna be more balancing for those months. So for the summer, actually in general, Ayurveda says food should be lightly cooked. Maybe 20% of the time you can go raw and at the right time of year. So think about that in your meal planning and your preparation, depending on what part of the world you live in, you may have a different season cycle. If you are maybe more experienced with your personal Ayurveda practice and you already know some of the symptoms to look for with regard to imbalance, if you're finding you're still having a little cup of imbalance that is spilling over from spring, then by all means, choose ingredients that are going to be more stimulating and warming as well as perhaps more raw in your diet to help mitigate those qualities. So I teach more about the 10 main pairs of qualities or gunas as we call them in my Clear Mind Strong Body program. And it's really part of the language of Ayurveda and how you can understand your unique needs and physiology and what medicines are for you because there is no one size fits all in this practice. This is about the subtle art of daily living. And that means showing up every day to observe the here and the now and what the universe is communicating to you through your sense organs and have you cultivated the concentration and focus along with the discipline to know which medicine you need and when. So that's a, you know, that's a tall order, right? When we talk about self-healing, it's like, oh, that accountability train, 
comes pulling in the station right quick. And that's why I teach these lessons in a community group format. I had stopped after my first few years of doing individual consultations because it was just too hard. It is too hard to, to redesign your life, go against cultural norms, learn new skill sets, and finish getting through the pandemic and work and have like relationships and lives, you know? So trust, this shit ain't easy, okay? Pardon my French, but I've been doing this a long time and that's why I love offering new and opportunities for us to connect like this. So all my Easties know that you were close to my heart even though I'm out here now. We'll continue having fun like this as is demanded. So. My rice timer's about to go off, but I have a feeling I'm gonna need a little bit more time. It's a lot of liquid in there. So um, adjust, do your thing. And uh, depending on what you need to do in your kitchen, you decide if you need to tend to your rice salad a little bit, or if you're ready to pull the soup out and add your lemon juice. Yeah, I'm gonna go a little longer too. There's still some. Quite a bit yeah. of water. I would also recommend at this point, even if there's water or broth left, that you do a taste test. If it's soft and chewy, the rice is done and you can just drain the excess fluid off. Wild rice is a little, it's a little more tricky, I, I find. Um, it tends to take longer to cook and. Oh, yeah, I have tons of water in here. I'm going to turn that up a bit to medium heat so I can get more of a consistent simmer and set my timer for maybe another seven or eight minutes and check it then. But you go by what your own observation is telling you. Yeah, mine's pretty close. Not I just tasted mine. It's almost like al dente. It's like not quite there, but close. I know. Are you mixing your grains or using just the wild? Just the wild. Yeah. And I've almost got all my dishes clean from this part. All my dishes are clean too. I'm just like, ooh, I like this one. This is good. <laughs> Trying to try to not get too ambitious with my menu planning. So just a reminder again, if you want to put in your suggestions for next week's recipe, make sure that you get that to me by the end of Friday. You can email that to me at chris, K-R-I-S at rasa-yana.com. And I will take it into consideration. interesting that this recipe is using pine nuts raw versus toasted. Um, you do you. You know, some people like it raw. I mean, it is a salad and you can eat this rice salad warm or cool. So up to you, personal preference. In the meantime, I'm going to pull out my serving bowls. Shared some of my favorite, what do you call this? Dishware, I guess, in episodes past. 
This is a beautiful ceramic dish that was gifted to me years ago when I graduated massage school back in, I don't know, 2007 maybe, um, by one of my producer and engineer friends at Berkeley College of Music, Leanne. Thank you for this. I still love and use this dish on a regular basis. So I'm gonna use that today to plate my wild rice on. I think the blue background with the colors of the rice and squash and all that will look really pretty. That is really pretty. pretty. Yeah, right? I used to be such a boring person, guys. Before I found Ayurveda and learned how to fully live, I would have never thought to like have fun and buy colorful dishes and plates and not care if they don't match in a full set of four or six or eight or whatever. You know, I'm a single gal here. I have not yet enjoyed the benefit of things like wedding registries and the like where people basically buy your household. Nope, step-by-step step here, blood, sweat, tears. Yep, haven't gotten there yet, but I definitely know I'm very happy with adding that sensory input into my meals. And that's part of what makes your food more nourishing, more easily digested and more taken in by the body and its intelligent wisdom, your body will know what to do. So keep it fresh, keep it local, keep it light, keep it early. Those are your four parameters for summer eating, right? And the rest is up to how far you care to take it. You know, whether I continue this series beyond July, I haven't decided yet, but I know that you have already been given the basic skill sets and vocabulary to start playing around with your library resources. And again, you know, if you want to learn more or consider enrolling in one of my programs, drop a note, let me know, and I will send you the link to my schedule. We can schedule a free 30 minute talk and just get clear on what your vision is. The next group of Clear Mind, Strong Body is going to launch September 15th. So get in now so that you can get your seat and resources and know what your next steps are gonna be because I want you to be successful. So I did have one of those wedding registries forever ago, almost 11 years ago now, and I had nowhere to put it all. <laughs> So I got a whole bunch of nice, you know, plates and glasses, but then in Boston, you can't put it anywhere. So it sat at my mom's house for years, uh, yeah. but then now finally in the last three years that I have a bigger place, I've been able to use some of it finally. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. And I'm definitely not complaining. I have been blessed and privileged and I love everything I have in my home, but I definitely have learned to loosen up and bring more vibrancy into my daily life. And I think you can do the same by adding another layer to your wellness, by changing your dining area with a new set of plates or linens or fresh flowers, or even just simply lighting a tea candle or two. It doesn't have to be a grand production. It just needs to assist in bringing your attention and awareness to the task at hand, which is nourishing yourself. Coming down to the last 30 seconds, my additional cooking time. I'll check my rice and we'll 
get toward wrapping up for this evening. If you know a friend or a loved one that would love to get in on the next few weeks of this, share the link with them. Tell them how to register. You just go to my website at rasa-yana.com, click under events at the top, and that'll take you to my list. And right at the top there, you'll see the registration button for the rest of these cooking classes. So those of you that have been able to join live, I thank you. And those of you who have been enjoying the replays, I thank you. And let me know how you're finding this series, if there are ways I could make it better, if there is perhaps a more desirable time slot that you would like to do this in, or as I said earlier, any remaining recipes, ingredients, or culinary inspirations from around the world for the remaining weeks. Don't wait because I don't wait. I'm a person that hits the pavement running. And if you roll with me, that's how I'm going to train you. And I'm going to give you the best information for what you got because, I mean, honestly, we just don't have time for BS anymore. And uh, I'm passionate about getting you there a lot faster than if you try going at it on your own. So. Test my rice here. I still have a lot of liquid. I'm a little concerned about that, but I did follow the ingredient, the instructions. So Better. How's your rice coming up? You think it's ready or it needs more? I'm gonna give it probably three more minutes, but it's it's almost there. Almost there. In those few minutes, go ahead and pour some of that lemon juice into your soup. Get your soup out of the fridge. It's funny, mine almost looks more like a, a thin green salsa. I'm sure if I had a fancy high speed blender like a Vitamix, it would look different. But I'm happy with this too. Little fiber don't hurt. So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I have a ninja and mine. Mine Your soup. Kind of, it's kind of soupy, but it, it's like a salsa too. It's a little too yeah. thin for salsa, but it's, you know. Yeah. yeah, that's how I feel too. So maybe that is the targeted consistency for the author that the author intended. When I make new recipes, I really like to stick to exactly what the author wrote down so I can use that as the benchmark for how I really wanna change it. Not always, sometimes I'm just, you know, pulling out of the kitchen and freestyling. But if I'm really committed to learning the flavors of a dish and getting my geek on, I'll do that. <laughs> and 
And then of course the last stage, any remaining water that might, or broth that might be in the pot, go ahead and just dump that out and then toss in your pine nuts or seeds and give the pot a nice mix so all the ingredients are nicely incorporated. Although, you know what, this could probably be a nice light stew on its own, even if you didn't want to pour off the excess broth. I mean, essentially, it's a wild rice and vegetable blend there, you know. Yeah, I'm going to take mine off. Mine looks good now and tastes good, too. Yeah. Awesome. When you're ready, show your plate to the world, to the Rasayana kingdom. <laughs> Jen has been with me a very long time, guys. I normally am not this goofy with people that I just meet. Jen has been rolling with me for a number of years. We worked together in healing an elbow fracture, which is what brought her into my office many years ago. And she's become a dear friend and supporter and student of the system. Which is great. It's been great doing this with you, Chris, for the past year. And then I don't even know how long we've known each other now, but it's like years. Yeah. It's been years. a long time. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah, I am passionate about giving people the skill sets to succeed and working with really great people. I don't work with just anybody anymore. I've been doing this a long enough time now that uh, I can be more selective about who I work with and really choose to work with only those that I believe I can help and that are ready to be helped, which is a part of my screening process. And we'll talk about some of those things that might be contributing to the lack of action on your part when we do our free 30-minute talk. You know, it's about getting that first domino dropped, you know, and allowing the momentum to carry you on long after I'm in your life and you finish any program I offer you, because this is really a lifelong study and practice. And, and it's a fun one. And it's a fun one, not all the time. It's not fun all <laughs> the time because when you're detoxing and you're reaching those breakthrough levels of crashing your ego or identity, honey, that, that is raw and rough. Yeah, and that's, that's why we do it as a group. That's why yoga teacher trainings are done in groups. That's why I went to Ayurveda school and trained in a group because you need Sangha. And that is also in keeping with the tradition of these systems as they were taught thousands of years ago. It was about relationship with teacher and student, not a 200 hour program you register for online. And perhaps you're less invested in that relationship. And so I take good care in who I invite into my programs and who I work with. And uh, like I said, if I don't think I can help you, I will try and get you to someone who can. So know that. Are you ready to show me your plate? I Carol? am, I am. You ready? Yes. Okay. Ooh, how pretty. 
Awesome. Okay, here's mine. Nice. Ooh, look at those colors, y'all. Very it's pretty. Fiesta over here in Rosiana land. And as always, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I will see you all next week. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you, Chris. You're welcome. Buen provecho. Enjoy.